The history of science, if you go back to when earth sciences first became a thing, and earth science would be like archaeology, geology, that kind of thing. When it first became a thing, it was tasked with proving the Bible right. We was expected to find evidence of catastrophes, big floods, the Tower of Babel, all this kind of stuff. We look walls of Jericho. It's looking for all these major catastrophes. So almost overnight, science went from being tasked with proving the Bible right to being tasked with proving the Bible wrong. No longer were ca catastrophic means accepted. They weren't even looked for. They weren't accepted anymore. This it might come as a shock to you, but that catastrophism it was known was not accepted really in science all the way up until the KT impact was accepted in 1980. When Alvarez got that, science was like, okay, well maybe, they call it punctuated equilibrium now, which is things naturally happen slowly, but every now and again they're punctuated by some horrible catastrophe, the kind of stuff a kid could suss, right? But for science, it took 150 years because of the dogma pushing back and forth. So this isn't new. What we're seeing right now is definitely, they're going to try to tell you things like the Clovis first is, is a, it's a one-off. This is, this is standard operating procedure. Um, if any of you have heard of Max Planck, uh, he was a Nobel Prize winning, winning physicist, and he wrote Planck's principle, uh, which is basically science doesn't progress one discovery at a time, it progresses one funeral at a time. Old timers have to die off. The young timers, the young guys that grew up realizing that this is being taught, this is most likely true or at least worth entertaining. They're the ones that are going to come along and change things. And you can see that with Clovis first, where it took almost 30 years of fighting because guys had to die and retire. And then the younger generation came and picked it up.